Hello and welcome to One Cool Thing, PC Mag's daily show where we show you one cool thing which we are checking out here at PC Mag. I'm Sasha Segan and we are here at the CE Week trade show today. Uh, it is a show that happens annually here in New York City where you get to see a lot of cool things at once but we are doing one at a time. Now as I was walking down the aisles I saw this amazing, amazing device. It is unlike anything I have ever seen before and we see a lot of 3D printers at PC Mag because you may notice something very special about these 3D printed objects. Most 3D printed objects, they're a little bit monochrome, aren't they? But this, what we have here, this is full color. What is going on here? And who are you? Thanks, Sasha. I really appreciate the excitement there. I'm Michael Armani, CEO of M3D where we launched the first consumer 3D printer in 2014. It was the biggest crowdfund in history, and that's really the American dream. That's what got us our start. And we, you know, we've been here for a couple of years getting that product out to market and honing it, and we saw a lot of excitement around 3D printing in those earlier years. And then it became a reality. It became, you know, go to Amazon, buy a printer, it prints in one color and it works, so what's next? We have probably a dozen 3D printers in the labs right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, uh, I think two of them are ours. Okay, there you go. So what is next? So what we think really separates 3D printing today from the dream, and the dream is to replace traditional manufacturing with local bespoke manufacturing. Not just printing of prototypes, not just printing a small production run, but actually replacing injection molded parts that traditionally come from a low cost manufacturing center, making them stronger, making them be able to do features and dimensions that were otherwise impossible. All the while not having to ship it, not having to wait for it, not having to pay for a mold, not having to buy a minimum quantity, and kind of indirectly pay taxes on what you don't sell at the end of every year. That's a lot of overhead and bulk reduced. If you can produce things that look the part of an injection molded part or a fancy looking part that's actually finished. Now the way traditional manufacturing does this is they'll take multiple things and stick them together. So you might have like, let's say, a caricature, an Iron Man, you know, they pick up a Toys R Us or something. You might have yellow, red, a couple other colors. It's usually three or four colors at most, but they're individually molded and put together. What a color 3D printer can do is it can put the colors together from four different files, in this case and it'll print out those four separate colors all in one go. So you're very close to realizing the dream of printing an actual finished item and also making beautiful things, things that stand out. Um, so the way that we're doing that is with this printer. This is the Crane mm -hmm. Quad by M3D. It is going to be $6.99 when it retails and it's currently on pre-order and we'll start shipping in about two months. What's special about this machine is it takes four different filaments and the traditional way to look at color is CYM that's your cyan yellow magenta, mm -hmm. and your K is your black. Now that's pretty good if you have a white background. Mm -hmm. In our case, the black can be switched out to white, it can be switched out to clear, or even multiple material printing, uh, which we'll get into later. So the basic idea is you take these four filaments, these are relatively standard in the sense that they're a normal dimension, we don't chip them, they're not proprietary. You're printing, you're printing just the usual ABS and PLA that you can buy from any 3D supply store? Pretty close, yeah. So you can use any PLA, you could use ABS. Um, at this point in time, we've evolved away from ABS as an industry, I think. It's more common to use PETG in place of ABS because it doesn't have odor. Mm -hmm. um, there's more advanced materials like low temperature polycarb that we're coming out with. Mm -hmm. We have a material called Tough that is a thermoplastic elastomer-like material that's fairly hard but extremely durable and doesn't break. All of those can go into this machine and out the other end you get this mixture which combines the different material properties and colors. And so a basic example is this vase right here where we have all PETG, we have a red and a blue, but we also have a black and a clear. And in this one print, you see more than 100 different colors. If we wanted to, we could make up to about 50,000 unique colors where you as a human can see the difference. And we can do a lot of different gradient style prints. This is what we consider low hanging fruit at this point. This is the minimum viable product of today. We turn it on, we're using some really cool code behind the scenes here called Melt that's open source. The entire printer is in fact open source. And it allows you to do these gradient prints. Probably the next level up is where you have to switch materials quickly. So in this case, four materials are coming into the same path, but rather than merging their properties, we actually pull back three of them and let one of them become the dominant one. And so in this case, you can see us switching from white to black on the first layer, 
We've got green for trees, and then we have a gray for a castle. And there's a little waste pillar that I didn't bring. It's, it's a small thing, actually, which is another accomplishment of our machine, is we don't need to purge a lot of material to switch colors, and you only switch once per layer. I was going to ask about, I was going to ask about purging if you were switching colors. Yeah, you don't have to purge in the case of a gradient, or if you're clever and find somewhere inside the print in the infill to hide it. But in a print like this, we just have a little strip on the side, one for each color, where it goes and clears itself. Now, I think it's interesting that when you were originally framing how you talked about this, it was very much in terms of manufacturing prototyping as opposed to, say, uh, home or hobbyist or education use. Is that where you see uh, uh, low-cost 3D printers going now? I think that's a, a very um, good, very potentially loaded question, so I'll, I'll take all aspects of it. Uh, I think the first side is that consumer 3D printing today has not been that easy bake oven model where you press a button and you magically get a print. Mm -hmm. Our own printer, micro 3D printer, kind of does that. It does it pretty well. But the average person hasn't really found a need for it yet in their homes. Mm -hmm. Instead, what we've seen is the evolution of the home hobbyist, tinker, hacker, maker, consumer. And this is an educated consumer. Somebody that went to school in the last 10 years yeah. is exposed to so much more computer, so much more 3D printing, coding, 3D design, software than you or I probably were ever exposed to in school. And they get this stuff right away. So a machine that's very open like this, that has complete access to electronics and the slicing and the coding, uh, the designing of the models, is actually consumer in this industry. 500,000 people buy these machines, not from us, but overall, every year. So the new consumer is somebody who knows how to hone the tool to be able to get what they want out of it and respects that they have to learn all the ins and outs of a machine to get the best out of it. And now, I was very surprised when you said six ninety nine dollars because uh, at first I was like, oh, is that in thousands? And then, uh, and then I thought most of, the, uh, most of the 3D printers we see in, in PCMag Labs are generally in the 1000 to 2000 range. Um, so how are you getting to this very low price with this very innovative capability? It's a good question. I think there's a couple answers. One is that we have to. Um, we are M3D. We are one of the survivors of probably the biggest shakeout period of any tech field in the last 10 years. Lots of companies thought that this was going to be you know, unicorn level. You know, everyone was going to make billions of dollars. And so everyone and their brother got involved. Some of them made it, most of them didn't. And then low-cost manufacturing centers started throwing their products into the pool too. And what we saw emerged out of that is technologies that worked really well if you had the time to put TLC into it, if you knew what you were doing. And so the expectation today is I went to Amazon or I bought a cheap 3D printer somewhere knowing that I had to fix something, knowing that it could be defective, but that I was gonna upgrade it anyway. And that's kind of a sad way to do things. It can be a good experience for some, but overall we think that we can do better. So we're taking the skills that we learned since 2014. We made the first affordable 3D printer, not just the first consumer 3D printer. At a time when things like MakerBots at $2,500 were the norm, Micro 3D printer came out at $299. So we're basically doing it all over again. Um, you're right, if you want to print color today, you get an inkjet 3D printer for $25,000 or above. Um, I think there's one model that's very proprietary that'll let you do it uh, at a razor and blades model for 3,000 and above. And then there's basically nothing else today under $3,000 that is a complete full color 3D printing filament based system. Um, so 699 is the target price. And we're using a lot of technologies in here that are standard. So before we released this product, we didn't just make a prototype, we actually reduced it to production. We bought 250 of these models. We're getting them ready for reviews now. We've already started shipping these units out. This is the quad head, which includes a 14th generation motor that evolved from the micro 3D printer. It's got number 40 steel gears in it. It's got bearings. These will last 5,000 hours or more. They're very tiny. And that's what allows us to make the quad head without having to have lots of gizmos up here to, to swap and, and hold big motors and have to power all those. The other thing that we did is we partnered with Duet 3D. This is a very industrial premier board that's open source that is designed by the Duet 3D team in the UK. Um, what M3 did, did is contribute our knowledge of manufacturing at lower costs. So we made a Duet board that is more affordable for the masses. And we're already shipping that as well. So these two components already reduced the practice. This one's actually very similar to technologies that are out there that have been established um, using 2020 railings and, um, sorry, these are palm sliders over here. 
that move around very smoothly and are well dampened. So this is really the survivor. If you think of it as an evolutionary process, this machine is the best value with the best quality that you can get. And what we do in addition to that that I think is special is we are an American manufacturer. So we assemble all of this in Maryland. We check that everything is good. We're not going to send you a power supply and an LCD and a board and let you be the one to do the QC. And if it sucks, we warranty it. We're not interested in that. We want to make these as reliable as possible going out the door. So um, as you were saying that, I, I was thinking about you're using a lot of you're using a lot of open source technologies uh, to help optimize this, to help make it affordable. Um, what are you giving back to the open source community? Because uh, open source is a it's not just a method; it's a philosophy. It is. I, it's religion, <laughs> in a way. Um, I think it's a very important question, and uh, I think we should first say that uh, we. We fund the Duet team to be able to not only design our board, but help build it. Mm -hmm. A portion of every single crane, as well as the Duet board itself, or a Pro Mega, goes back to the creators, the Duet 3D team, as well. Um, in addition, I think people have this thought that open source means somebody else will do all the work for them. Be it you know, one really dominant user that contributes a lot, uh, to, the, to the GitHub repo or the main creator themselves. And that's not what it's about. Open source is about somebody who has a vision maintaining the repo and knowing how to direct other people's help. And as the primary user of this now, we contribute to that repo. So for instance, the standard LCD in the RepRap industry, this is a 12864. I want my users to have it because you can buy it for 10 bucks on Amazon. I don't see the need for a $300 fancy system. You know, you can use one if you want, but why not give them this ability? This code base didn't exist in the Duet 3D, and we were the ones to write it, and we contributed it back to the repo. So right now, these are starting to become active for the first time, and now all Duet users, going back to the beginning of that board, are able to use this technology. Great. So now, um, because I've never seen I've never seen multicolor 3D printed objects on a on a consumer level printer before. Um, what kinds of what kinds of files are you printing from? Uh, what D does there need to be a new file format for these kinds of objects? Yeah, that's a, a very good question. Um, basic way, if we're looking at minimum viable product, is you take multiple SDLs. So a lot of software packages, the SolidWorks, the 360s, things like that, will let you put different sets of files together, which you can export one by one. You then re-import those, and you assign each one of them to one extruder, or in our case, one of many mixing extruders. So you can define as many tools as you want, you know, uh, magenta and cyan, and you'll give you your purple, for example, and you have multiple tools assigned to multiple files. If we're going to take it one step further, along with the open source community, it's to figure out, is it, you know, VRML or AML, which one of these file types embodies most of what we're looking for? The ability to have textures, surfaces, uh, do we want it pixelized, or, or do we want it uh, vectorized? Which one of these is going to be the right one? I, I don't think anyone can say yet, although um, we would like to you know, try to push that ourselves as much as possible. I think it'll ultimately become the community figuring it out. Okay, okay. So now you said that uh, we're seeing this here. Uh, I mean, we're certainly seeing it for the first time. You said that you're building the first ones of these now. When are they going to become available to consumers? Two months. Okay, so two months from now at six ninety nine. dollars Okay, great. And so this is uh, the Crane 3D? By M3D. The Crane 3D. The Crane Quad by M3D is the uh, the first affordable uh, four color 3D printer. We're seeing it here first at CE Week in New York with PC Mag. Uh, thank you all for watching. This has been one cool thing. Uh, we will be back. Uh, keep checking on PC Mag's YouTube page. We will have a lot more cool things for you.